Greetings fellow test subjects. Test subject 1337 here for Aperture Gaming. They make it. We test it. You play it. Uh, true to my word with my last post, my companion cube is sporting my brand spanking new hat, and I'm still wearing good old Trucky McReezy hat. Okay, now that we got the hats out of the way, let's get down to brass tacks. Today's episode, re we review the long-awaited review of Watch Dogs, the game for current and next-gen co consoles. Now, I gotta warn you, even though the game's been out for a little bit, the following review may contain spoilers for those of you who haven't played it yet, so watch with caution. The story revolves around one Aiden Pierce, the main protagonist of this, uh, of this game. And it takes place in the lovely city of Chicago, Illinois. It takes place uh, in the present day, but with very with some very futuristic technology. Um, the plot revolves around well, Mr. Pierce is a uh, is a hacker and thief by trade. Well, we, um, only one of his hacks went south so bad that it affected him and his immediate family. And uh, someone who was supposed to just scare him off into not hacking ever again, it uh, cost the life of his young of his niece from on his sister's side. So, yeah, the story starts out with a little bit of tragedy. So, Mr. Pierce, still maintaining his thief status, he decides to go after the people who hurt his family while still maintaining his thief lifestyle. It's uh, pretty interesting how every um. So like I said, it takes place in Chicago, Illinois, and they have a system called the Chicago Transit Operating System, or CTOS. And uh, it was pointed, pointed out uh, by The Late Show with, uh, with no, not The Late Show, by, the, by Conan O'Brien. He did a test of this game, and he had one of his tech guys explain to him how having one transit and security system only operating on one, one program is a very bad idea. So yeah, it's a little interesting. Yeah, um, so you're able to go, so the game involves you, you have the use of your cell phone, where you can pretty much do anything. You can control bridges, you can control traffic lights, you can see other people's uh, information on their cell phones. And not just when they have their cell phones, it's with them in general. You have access to a face recognition feature, it shows you the face of the person, it gives you their name, their age, their income, it gives you almost everything you want to know about them. Now, while the game is open world and you can get away with almost doing anything, there is one thing I'd like to point out, and this tip comes to us straight from GameInformer.com. Now, before you go off trying to do everything, you should wait until you complete the level called Open Your World. It's like the fifth or sixth mission in the first act, so just be a little patient and try it out. But uh, there is so much other stuff to go going on in the world around you. Like uh, you can uh, go, you can go to uh, certain areas, and you can play chess with people to try to test your brain skills, or you can try something called a digital trip, where you insert like a an earpiece, and your brain becomes involved in a great computer simulation. The one that I really liked was the one that I've liked so far is Alone. I think it's a good metaphor slash symbolism about a, about uh, Mr. Pierce and how he views the world around him and how he thinks others view him. It's a conflicting internal struggle for him, based on how he feels about the, the death of his niece and what he does for a living. Now, after you do uh, open your world, you can do so much. You can, uh, you, you can uh, continue to upgrade your phone for hacking abilities, and it's great because you can op uh, use cameras to spy on people, and uh, you can also use barricades to stop police cars, because as you do stuff, you will gain a reputation that people will either praise you for as a vigilante or try to call you into the police because you are hurting too many people. Now, it's really, now, speaking of hurting people, they have things called crimes in progress, where if someone is doing something wrong, you can go to the scene of a crime and try to stop them and further gain your reputation of a good guy. Now, this game focuses... Now, uh, visually, this game is amazing. There is so much detail involved. And since it is for, well, the new generation consoles, it's it's great. I mean, with the details with the with the environments, with like with people, vehicles, oh, 
and like if you go to a newsstand, it's amazing how they have all the details for the magazines. It, it, it is just a flat out amazing visual experience. Um, so yeah, and like all the vehicles, it's amazing. Is right. If you you have two choices, you can either either steal a vehicle or you can use the vehicle on demand app on your phone, and a vehicle will come to you. But if uh, you steal a vehicle, you unlock the ability to order it later on for vehicle on demand. So there's all these vehicles to collect, and they have different sizes, and they have different functionality. It's amazing. This game has such a great core driving mechanic. Now, you don't just hack and you don't just drive. You also have guns. You can actually buy weapons in the game, and uh, you have a variety. You have, hand, you have pistols, you have machine guns, you have shotguns. You have uh, pretty much the works. Now, uh, to, why would you need to be using all these guns? Because sometimes you have to... You have to get down and dirty and do some work that can't be done just with computers. Um, you, um, like I said, you can either disrupt crimes or you can uh, take out gangs. And then the guns, they are prominently featured in the main game, but you can use them for the multiplayer events. And this is really amazing. They have more than just uh, standard multiplayer. Well, for the standard, standard multiplayer, you can uh, be in up to a team of four against another team of up to four. Your object is to find data, hack it, and then get it away from the other team. Now, the, and the real amazing uh, multiplayer thing is the main game uh, interaction. If you have your system uh, hooked up to uh, the internet while you're doing the play, people you can you can try to take on other people in special events like uh, races, or you can try to do an observation report where you have to spy on someone, or you have to try to stop them from spying on you. And one of the big ones is data hacking, where you have to try to find someone who is playing their game, but they, and they look like Mr. Pierce. And you look like Mr. Pierce, but not to them, it's vice versa for both of the players. You have to find the person who's hacking your data and, 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 and uh, stop them before, before they hack your data. And you actually get an online reputation because of this. Now, that sounds fun, and it, is, it doesn't happen while you're doing a mission. The game actually is aware of that, so you're not interrupted in the middle of a mission. But uh, if you're like doing just free roaming around, it could happen at any time. Now it is it is fun to do that, but uh, there's a downside. You could pretend like uh, if you have a mission that's like ten feet away from you, and then the event is triggered where you have to go play against some other player, you might end up on back on the other side of the city and have to take the long trip back to your mission. So play with caution. And if you don't want to interact with people online, then just don't have your system plugged in. Uh, to date, I've only encountered three issues with the game. Uh, one where our character was walking, but uh, not going anywhere. Uh, one of the uh, chess game people, I, I was about to play the game, but it was weird. It looked like there were two. It looks like he was cloned, so there was two of him sitting simultaneously in the chair and moving around. It was very weird looking. And thirdly, there was one where I was trying to play a shell game, and the system froze, so I had to turn it off. So only three minor issues to nitpick. And like I said, uh, the online features, it's it might be a little bit annoying if you're trying to play the game and then someone starts hacking you at the wrong time. Also, uh, there are some uh, contract missions that you have to take for extra cash and credit. Now, like I said, wait till you've completed the open your world thing because you need uh, some experience under your belt before you go doing these. I got stuck playing one level like I tried. I had to replay it like 10, 15 times, and I was like, nope. I'm just gonna play through the main game and then come back to this later when I have some more experience. It's pretty good because uh, you need the experience to like unlock the ability to stop helicopters from tracking you, uh, turn off the power, or keep uh, security from uh, making contacts and telling the police where to go. So the game is good and it has has a few, it has a few flaws, but overall I think it's good. And I think the best part is uh, how they have a it's the city of Chicago and they didn't just make up a random one like in the near future where this building is over here and this one doesn't exist in the real world. They actually have real buildings from Chicago set up as landmarkers that you can check in digitally, uh, like in the modern day and age Foursquare here in the real world. So it's pretty cool how they have futuristic aspects and a new all this new technology, but they're keeping it uh, as close to real as possible. I know I'm running a little long here, but I want to just point out uh, the three factors that this game reminds me of. First off, with the driving and shooting function, it's very strongly reminiscent of a Grand Theft Auto-like game. Only, 
Yeah, only it's it's really good. It's amazing all the stuff that happens in this game. Uh, the second thing it reminds me of, I have stated this before, and I will state it again. And since it is from Ubisoft, uh, I think I can get away with it. I called Watch Dogs Assassin's Creed Modern Day and Age. Now, while you don't have a hidden blade, you can choose to either shoot people to take them out, or you can go with the non-lethal approach and knock them out with a uh, with a extendable baton. And thirdly, uh, the game has reminiscent. Of, it's a little bit of a Batman. Now, just hang with me. Just bear with me. There's no Batmobile. There's no grappling hooks. There's no batarangs, and there's no oddly colored, weirdly dressed villains. But uh, Adrian, he, but Mr. Pierce, he has. Uh, after doing all this hacking stuff, he's still a criminal, but he said that he studied like psychology and all these up and learned how to fight and stuff. So it's weird. Like after the, after the family lost this event, he's taken up uh, some responsibility and is now learning how to fight in other ways, shapes, and forms. So he's kind of got a little bit of Batman in him. Okay, so overall, uh, looking at all the pros and all the cons, and. Uh, and depending on where you ordered from, you also uh, got a special uh, pre-order bonus of which mission you could play. Like, if it was GameStop, I think it was the Palace Pack, and with uh, I got I got mine via Amazon, so I got the Sharpshooter Packs. So uh, all these packs they give you weapon unlocks, and you can also get special abilities through UPlay since that's affiliated with Ubisoft, and you can also buy out different outfits for Mr. Pierce. So with all of these features available, with only a few minor nitpicks that I could point out, we here at Aperture Labs, we give Watch Dogs a solid 9 out of 10. It's a very good game and I highly recommend it, so go play it if you get the chance. Thank you for watching, and until next time, this is Test Subject 1337 for Aperture Gaming saying, thank you for watching.